Alrighty. So, I have made the creative decision that in every video where I rank movies, I will be wearing an Udi. So enjoy that, I guess. Let's be real for a second here. The MCU, it's not that great. It's 23 or 24 or however many there are of the most generic formulaic superhero movies you will see. A lot of these are boring cash grabs. It's the same thing as the last movie, just done in a slightly different way. In saying that though, these are huge. You cannot help but respect what they are doing over there at Marvel. So, good job I guess. And I really like a lot of these movies. Some of them are really rewatchable. In fact, me and my partner recently rewatched the MCU and I had a really fun time. So I guess you could say I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the MCU. I'm gonna rank all the movies in the MCU from not worst to best, but with a tier list. So I'll be talking about them in order of release, starting with Iron Man and finishing with, of course, the recent Black Widow. So let's get into it. So we should all know tier list ranks by now. Um, F is obviously a fail. It's like school grades and S being the best, which I see as sexy. So if there are any sexy movies in here, uh, they sit in S. So look, we start with Iron Man and obviously it's the start of everything. This at the time was awesome. I remember watching this for the first time and just thinking how fresh it feels. Even re-watching it, it just feels fresh. The MCU is only possible because of this movie um, and to say it's successful is an understatement. Sure, this isn't the most tightly constructed movie ever made. The villain is super boring. Kind of a theme now in the MCU. But this is one of the ones that I can revisit outside of the MCU. I'd happily watch this again just in my own time. And that's mostly thanks to Robert Downey Jr. The MCU has had some insane talent over the years, but Robert Downey Jr. arguably gives off the best performance of the lot. He is iconic as Tony Stark, and it's a big reason why this movie passes. I will give it a B. Uh, yeah, this one's a bit less fun, isn't it? It's hard to even find things to say about this one because it's just forgettable. Looking at this movie on paper honestly looks awesome. I think Ed Norton is actually the perfect choice as Bruce Banner. He looks like Bruce, he feels like Bruce. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work. This one's hidden away from Marvel fans pretty well. I'm not even sure if you can find it on Disney Plus to be honest. It's by no means the worst thing to come out of the MCU, but considering how big the subject matter is, it's gonna be a D. Yeah, this one stinks. Safe to say after Iron Man, the MCU had a bit of a slow period. I'm going to say that this is the laziest movie in the MCU. You can just tell that they knew this would make money regardless. So they just had Iron Man do the stuff he did in the first movie, um, but in more boring ways. The script of this is horrendous, and Ivan Vanko and Justin Hammer are together the worst villains I have seen possibly in superhero movies. I don't say this lightly, the acting in this movie was really poor as well, even Robert Downey Jr. The sooner we forget about this one, the better. If there's one thing that's really simple to do in a blockbuster film, it's a fish out of water story. Just having a character and plonking them in unfamiliar territory is always going to get a few chuckles here and there. And in that regard, this movie is pretty funny. But honestly, too much time is taken away from Loki here. Loki is probably at his best in this movie, which is... Weird to say. He's made a joke in the later movies, but here he is cunning, he is mysterious, and he's actually pretty scary. You also can relate and connect to the guy a bit, which is always important in a villain. I think they had an idea with what they wanted to do with Loki and kind of veered away with it as the later movies came along. Look, this movie is pretty basic. The romance is kind of yucky, but it's a decent enough fish out of water story, and I actually think Loki carries it pretty hard to a strong C. Let's be real, does anyone love this movie? Yeah, it's decent, but does anyone have any strong feelings about it? This doesn't really warrant any strong emotions from its viewers, which is fine. Um, well, actually, no, it's not fine, though. Having two lovers being separated by time should have me in tears, but it doesn't. A lot of this movie is really, really great. I love the action. I really love the propaganda montages. I think they're really fun. Unfortunately, that just doesn't carry throughout the whole movie. A lot happens in this movie that should make me emotional, but it really fails to do so. I think having this on the same level as Thor seems about fair. Oh, the Avengers. Just the theme of this alone. Just the theme makes this an A. This is such an epic movie. When this came out, this was massive. All the big characters in the universe come together so neatly, it's so good to see. 
Is this the Godfather? No, it's not, but it doesn't need to be. This did its job perfectly. It gave the audience some awesome action and some great laughs without really many glaring flaws. As a Hawkeye fan though, I gotta say, why? I was really disappointed in my favorite character's proper introduction to the universe, but it didn't ruin my experience of the movie. I really loved it. Hot take here. Iron Man 3 is actually pretty damn impressive. In fact, I actually prefer this to Iron Man 1. It deals with PTSD in such a genuine way, it's really cool to compare this to Avengers Endgame with Thor, and the way they kind of use PTSD as comic relief in that movie. PTSD is the major theme of this film. Tony Stark's PTSD hits you hard. Up to this point, we hadn't really seen a hero in the MCU made this vulnerable. It's amazing to see the mental struggles that these heroes face for the first time. This film does vary at times in tone, which is always going to be an issue with Marvel. It is hard to feel what the characters are feeling when jokes are being made every 10 seconds. But I think Iron Man 3 manages that better than most films and earns a spot in the B tier. Moving on. This is one that I'm weirdly not the keenest on. I know like 99% of people love this, but for me it just drags. This has some unreal action behind it though and some real heart as well. You can't really watch this movie without feeling just a little bit towards Bucky and Captain America's relationship. But I wasn't the biggest fan of this big political conspiracy story. The conspiracy heavy plot just wasn't enough for me, I was just never really that invested. Just my opinion though. I know a lot of people love this one, but it only earns a C from me. How can you not love this movie? Honestly, up until this stage, the MCU was really getting pretty stale. Each movie was a different variation of the last, bad guy wants to destroy the planet, hero stops him, wow. But this is so fresh, so wild, it just works from the minute it starts. From the soundtrack to the characters who are expertly played, this movie just works. Its energy is unmatched from any MCU film. This is honestly my favourite of the lot. I'll be revisiting this one a lot through the years. It earns an S for sexy. This, however, is not sexy. The MCU has a very specific formula which I just touched on, um, and it's abused in every movie they make, pretty much. Fans don't want to see risks taken, they just want to see what they are used to seeing, which is funny jokes and stuff blowing up. The very first scene in this movie perfectly demonstrates the MCU formula. I knew from the first 10 minutes of this thing that it was going to be a bore, and it was. Nothing about it intrigues me, which is sad because the trailers got me really hyped. No risks are taken, it is as predictable as anything, and a real disappointment. This one is honestly lucky not to be in the F tier. Alright, I really dislike Ant-Man, um, not as a character but because he just always kills me at quiz nights. You'll get a question like, how many heroes have had their own solo movie in the MCU? And you always forget about this stupid little guy. Paul Rudd is fun as Scott Lang, but like, eh. Although I'd say it earns a pass in my book for its creative use of action. This is something that Marvel just always excel at. It just isn't interesting to see strong people punch each other like action movies provide. The MCU are really clever and creative, and the way they utilize everyday objects in some of these action scenes are really cool. So for me, that's enough to make it a C. This is the most frustrating movie in the entire superhero genre. The fact that they take this intriguing story, ripe with promise and emotion, and turn it into two and a half hours of semi-enjoyable action and cringe, by far the biggest waste of a story. Seeing the Avengers fight each other should not be fun. It shouldn't be funny, it should be frightening. Having this form of protection, this team, completely crumble, it should be a huge moment in the MCU. But it isn't because there are no stakes. We know everything will be okay, you even have these guys fighting off against each other and cracking jokes while doing so. It is so lame. The only reason this isn't an F is because Hawkeye doesn't get mind controlled. Doctor Strange as a character always kind of intrigued me. I was keen to see how they would introduce him in this universe, and I think they did it in a really cool way. Yes, there are parallels to Tony Stark and his story, 
But the pain Strange has to go through is a whole lot different. You see change from Tony's character after multiple movies. His arc ends in Endgame. Doctor Strange arc, you could say, is finished in Doctor Strange. It's really cool to see these similar characters dealt with in different ways. I also love the visual effects. They are really cool. And the start of this movie is very strong. But then the villain is introduced, and not even the incredible Mads Mikkelsen can steady the ship. This falters really hard, really fast. It was a very interesting film while Strange was having to transform and develop himself, but then it unfortunately becomes pretty boring. Still earns a pass though, um, one I would happily revisit just for those visual effects alone. Okay, you know what? This is another hot take. I really love Guardians Volume 2. The themes revolving around fatherhood are so genuinely portrayed. In fact, this film sticks to its themes harder than any other film in the MCU. It also has one of the most emo- you know what, it has the most emotional ending in any MCU film, including Endgame. I do cry a lot in movies, but this one really got to me. Yes, this does have its flaws, the humour is very cringe at times, but in my books it's one of the better films. So it earns an A. I think Marvel went on a bit of a roll here, and you can just tell with this one, that it shows you don't need high stake villains that are going to destroy the world to make an enjoyable piece of cinema. This is my favourite MCU villain for sure. He isn't trying to destroy the world or a city or anything really. He's simply a father trying to look after his family. I love that. Comparing this guy to Dormammu or Malekith is just stupid. They'd eat this guy for breakfast. But he is the perfect villain for a friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man. You know what? This is just a really good movie. Spider-Man has to earn an A. Damn, the Marvel role continues. It's Taika Waititi, it just has to be an A. I will say one thing about this movie, it does make Thor 1 and 2 a little bit obsolete. Thor transforms heaps here. It feels a bit odd to watch uh, Thor 1 and 2 just because of how different he is in Thor Ragnarok. But that doesn't matter, this is just a funny film. In fact, I would call it a comedy more than a superhero film. The jokes don't always stick, but when they don't, there is another one waiting around the corner to make up for it. And Jeff Goldblum is in it, so has to get an A. This one's another hot take because this is arguably the most critically acclaimed film in the MCU. It's the only film to have an Oscar nomination for Best Picture, but it kind of baffles me as to why that is. This is visually impressive. Um, that's when the action isn't going on. I'm looking at you, CGI Rhino. But seriously, the world building is on point here. The costuming, the makeup, the score. It's a whole new environment in which we're exploring for the first time and it's really fun. But the all too familiar story mixed with the bland characters just had me a little bored. Chadwick Boseman was a fine actor, we saw his ability in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, but he clearly could not find any personality through the dull script. T'Challa is impossible to like, which means the villain Killmonger is even harder to like. How are you going to have a compelling villain if you don't have a compelling protagonist? But just for the world building alone, this has to get a pass. It just looks and feels incredible. It's unfortunate the story couldn't do the same. Movies like Infinity War are always going to have to sit above that pass mark. This movie has a lot of issues. I hate Vision and Wanda in this movie. I hate Peter Quill. Some storylines just don't feel that interesting at all. But this is a massive event. This reminds me of a time where I went interstate to see my favourite sport team play in a really, really big match. I got there, it was a huge spectacle, there were 100,000 people in the crowd, and my team got absolutely destroyed. I always look back on that time really fondly though, because even though I obviously didn't enjoy the event, the spectacle was just too grand not to appreciate. That is a similar story with Infinity War. This is not a perfect film, it is arguably not even that good, but it is eventful. This had so much hype around it, it was impossible not to get a bit stirred up while watching this. You won't get an event as inclusive as this movie and Endgame for a while. And you gotta give props to Josh Brolin as Thanos, brilliantly written and brilliantly portrayed. Infinity War kinda has to get a B. I love that we go from one of the biggest movies ever made to the Ant-Man sequel. This is small on a lot of scales. Why does this guy even get another movie? I know that it does tie into Endgame, but why did it have to be Ant-Man? I don't even remember this releasing, but um, it's hard to imagine that people would have been hyped for this after Infinity War came out. I don't even hate this movie that much. It's not the worst in the MCU, um, but it's definitely not the best. It feels like that guy at the party who no one really knows all that well. He just sits in the corner by himself and stares at people. That's Ant-Man and the Wasp. 
I have always hated Captain Marvel as a character. I just don't see the interest there at all. And now I hate her even more. I love Brie Larson, one of the finest going around, but man, she annoyed me in this movie. Not her fault whatsoever, the writing and just the character are solely to blame. How can you give us one of the most overpowered, well, the most overpowered hero in the MCU and expect us to find her interesting? The final act of this film where Captain Marvel is just destroying the enemies is kind of laughable. I know it's supposed to be hyping us up, finally someone who can take on Thanos, but it's just so anticlimactic. You have this story, an intriguing one, which is resolved by this deus ex machina-esque moment, where the protagonist just goes sicko mode. There are two movies in the MCU that I really hate, and this is one of them. This is the most hyped movie ever made, and do you want to know why that is? Because Hawkeye's back, baby! Yeah! yeah. Hold up, hold up, wait up. You really thought that just because Thanos was defeated, the core Avengers disbanded, and two of the most iconic characters are gone, that the series would end? You know that Disney like money, right? Far From Home is only interesting when it is Peter and MJ being awkward together, Everything else about it is just kind of lame, unfortunately. I would have loved more from Peter like we saw in Iron Man 3, some emotional depth, that would have been nice. We see glimpses of it, and the story is supposed to revolve around his mourning of Tony, but it feels like it just doesn't play the part it should in this film. And finally, the long-awaited, long-overdue solo film for Black Widow. The question is, what does Felix think about it? It's not very good. I was expecting a fleshed out look at Black Widow, what makes her the mysterious assassin we all know and love, but we don't get that. We get glimpses of it, but this film is just as about the promotion of Yelena, her sister, in this MCU. Natasha deserved a quality film. The stakes were never going to be high, and that wasn't the issue. All I and many fans wanted was an exploration into this character. Unfortunately, that just doesn't happen at all. I'm annoyed to even think about this because the potential is there. This could have been epic, but it wasn't. I know it may sound harsh, but this movie is just not it. The only reasonable place for this to go in is the E tier. So, sorry to anyone who wants to see Black Widow, I guess. So, that's that. That was all, however many MCU movies there are, ranked. I gave you my hot takes, so I expect to see some controversial opinions down in the comments below. Stay tuned for some upcoming videos where I rank series. The Udi will, of course, have to feature again. But in the meantime, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe if you are new. And you might want to bring an umbrella. It's raining out.